Я жила в городе Харьков, это восточная Украина. I это lived in, in Kharkiv, which is in eastern Ukraine. Это город, который принял первый удар на себя. This is a city that took the first hit from the Russians. До этого у нас была мирная страна, мы ни с кем не воевали. Before we had a peaceful country, we did not attack anybody, we did not go into wars with anybody. Мы вели мирный способ жизни. Я пенсионерка. We led a peaceful life. Um, I am technically retired. Но имела небольшой бизнес. I had a small business. Я продавала конфеты. I was selling cookies and candies um, in a little uh, kiosk. Да. И мы никогда не думали, что наш сосед на нас нападет. We never thought that our neighbor would attack us. Мы до последнего в это не верили. Until the very last moment, we did not. We refused to believe it. Но когда мои дети нас настояли на том, чтобы я уехала с Украины, когда начались военные действия, я выезжала с Харькова уже под обстрелом. My children insisted that I leave Ukraine uh, when the attack started. Um, and by the time I uh, got everything, got ready to go, I was leaving while they were bombing and shelling the city. I wasn't able to leave on the first day. And we spent the night in a basement of an apartment building. The next day I was able to get on an evacuation train um, and I was able to leave Kharkiv. Uh, we had a lot of foreign students that were leaving with us. Um, we were all together on the train. There were a lot of people in, um, in train cars. But, but every, everyone was helping, everyone was sharing food and water. Ну вот таким вот образом мы очень долго добирались до Ужгорода. Нас держали в Киеве. Мы стояли восемь часов. So it took a lot longer um, than it normally would to get from Kharkiv to Ujgorod, which is on the um, Slovakia border. Um, we stopped in Kiev for eight hours. Мы ехали очень долго, больше суток. More than 24 hours it took to get there. Ну вот таким вот образом. Расскажи, как как ты вы в Киеве стояли, почему и? Мы в Киеве стояли на переправе через Днепр. Нас завезли под какой-то мост. Это было более безопасное место. We had to stop in Kiev uh, for eight hours. Um, the train got pulled under a bridge because it was safer that way. At the time, they were bombing Kiev. Uh, и нас продержали, пока появилась более безопасная зона. Нас перевезли через uh, Днепр. И снова нас загнали в тупик. Uh, Мы не заехали на вокзал, там была чрезвычайная ситуация. Um, so they waited until it was safer um, to have the train cross the Dnieper River. Um, and then after we crossed, they um, had a stop again um, in a different spot, um, the train did not go to the train, uh, to the main train station in Kiev because it was very dangerous because of bombings. Um, at, at one point there was no electricity in Kiev, so we had to stop and just stay there. So eventually so eventually they were able to pull the train um, to the outside and then we were able to proceed. It was very difficult. When you know that somewhere they're shooting and they're dropping bombs and explode, uh, dropping explosions on people. Ну, расскажи, что ты об этом думаешь вообще? Вы знаете, вот я анализирую сейчас многие вещи, которые происходят. Хочу сказать об именах. 
наш президент Владимир Зеленский и президент России Владимир Путин. Казалось бы, два Владимира. Зеленский Владимир, стойкий, мужественный, миролюбивый. Он защищает наш народ, он защищает свою страну. So I, when I see what's happening, um, I look at the names. You have two Vladimirs. You have Vladimir Zelensky and you have Vladimir Putin. Um, two Vladimirs, but completely different. Vladimir Zelensky is the president of Ukraine. He is brave and he's defending his country. Um, he's defending his people. И Владимир Путин. Жестокий. Владимир Путин. Cruel. Um, убийца. Он убивает наших людей. Он убивает женщин, детей. Он убивает своих солдат. Он посылает им на верную смерть. He's a murderer. He's murdering our children, our women. Um, he's murdering his own soldiers who he's sending into battle without telling them what's going on. Я считаю, что совершенно не, не было причины нападать на Украину. There was no reason to attack Ukraine. Но что что его повергло в это, мы до сих пор не можем понять. We still don't know what, what, why he did this. Наши мужчины вывозят своих детей и женщин в Западную Украину. Там более безопасно. А сами идут воевать. So right now, uh, a lot of men from Eastern Ukraine are taking their wives and their children, their families to, uh, to Western Ukraine because it's a little bit safer there now. And then they're returning um, and going to fight the Russians. The и потерян мир в нашем доме. Семьи выгнаны со своих городов, со своих сел. У нас, у нас нету. Мы бросаем дома, мы уезжаем. Они становятся злыми. Наши мужчины, они защищают Родину. Они защищают свои семьи. So in Donbas, there has been fighting going on for eight years, and because because of Putin and financing um, the uh, the separatist movement, um, our men know how to fight. They've learned how to fight during this time, um, but when this war spilled to the rest of the peaceful Ukraine. Um, it, there, there are so many lives that have been appended, um, so many lives that have been ruined. Um, families have to leave their homes, um, and of course, people are angry. They're angry, and they do not want to, to be under the Russian rule. The entire world supports us. Um, but I don't know what line Putin has to cross before we start getting help uh, in fighting. There is uh, information going around that uh, Putin is ready to uh, use chemical weapons. The world has to, has to take action. Maybe something will make him stop, make Putin stop. Uh, the Ukrainian people are not ready for this. You know, the peace, that supposed peace that Russia is bringing um, is causing uh, grief, death, um, and pain, and Ukrainian people are not ready for that. Мы не готовы ради амбиций какого-то человека терять своих родных, своих детей, своих мужей, своих братьев. We are not ready. We're not ready to lose um, our relatives, our parents, our children, because of ambitions of one person. Остановите Путин. Прекратите войну. Please stop Putin and stop the war in Ukraine. На границе людей было много. Значит, there were a lot of people at the border. Um, много людей ехало в автобусах. A lot of people were crossing in buses. 
Это был переход немножко длиннее, чем пешеходный. You could walk across the border, but and being on the bus took a little bit longer. Но вы знаете, меня больше всего удивило поведение детей. But I was just in awe and impressed by how kids were behaving and how kids were taking it. Some, some women had two, three kids with them. But it seemed like the kids understood that they couldn't cry, they shouldn't, um, shouldn't be throwing tantrums, that they had to sit and uh, follow what their mom was telling them. And be stoic. На границе мы стояли 12 часов. Oh, we were stopped at the border for 12 hours on the bus. Но вот так вот. Женщина умерла? Да. Перед нами за три автобуса до нас в одном из автобусов умерла женщина. While we were waiting, um, a woman passed um, in one of the buses. In fact. Uh, she had a heart attack. No. Как вы знаете, я тоже думала, что я не пройду этот путь. Было очень тяжело. It was so difficult. I, at times, I had doubts that I would make it. Мне в автобус в поезде было плохо. While I was on the train, I started. Uh, there was a time where I wasn't feeling well. Но благодаря тому, что в Полтаве съела очень много иностранных студентов, медики. On one of the stops, um, a lot of um, foreign students got on, and they were medical students. Они мне помогли лекарствами. They, they helped me. They gave me some medication. Рассказывали, как надо выйти с этого положения. They told me what to do in that situation. Я им очень благодарна. And I'm thankful to them for it. Now you also have a son that's still in Ukraine. Um, how is he doing? Have you been in contact with him? У тебя сын, который все еще на Украине. Как он? Ты с ним контакт ходила? Ну через телефон, через Viber мы с ним общаемся. Не всегда получается. I keep in touch with him uh, through phone. There's an app uh, that I talk to him through. Sometimes I am able to reach him. Sometimes not. У нас утро начинается с того, что я обзваниваю всех своих родных, всех своих друзей. My morning starts by me making calls to all of my relatives, all of my friends, and checking. И когда телефон не отвечает, я молю Бога, and, чтобы они были живы. And when they don't answer the phone, I uh, pray to God and ask the God for them to be alive. Uh, у меня осталось в Харькове два брата. I have two brothers in Kharkiv with their families. Моя сестра. My sister. И мой сын. My sister with her family and my son. Они не покинут Харьков. They will not leave Kharkiv. They refuse to leave Kharkiv. And at first, when I was urging her to leave, to get on the train, she, I think she was just, she just refused to believe and um, I think she was just resisting until the very last moment. But I was extremely concerned because we were getting news about explosions happening all over Ukraine. Then we heard the news of shellings and bombings. Uh, we heard of people hiding in subway stations, people hiding in um, basements of apartment buildings. So I was extremely concerned because a shell or a bomb can hit a train um, at any moment. So it was extremely nerve-wracking um, to wait um, and hope that she's alive and sh that she makes it out okay. It, it was such a big relief to have her here because she's safe, um, but it's painful to watch what's going on. It's painful because my family are there, but just for the Ukrainian people. Um, it's, it's very difficult. So we have been in touch with Lao family and we're extremely thankful for the help. Um, at this point, um, they're helping us with information and they're going to help us with paperwork um, when the time comes. There, there have to be certain allowances by the U.S. government made in order to accept refugee in, uh, refugees from Ukraine um, in official status. But Lao family, they are willing, they're on standby and they will do everything to help us transition. I want to make sure she's able to stay. 
um, and she doesn't have to go back um, after you know a certain period of time. We we hope that something will happen. Um, we hope that other countries are able to step in, and you know there are a lot of possibilities. But we pray. I guess hope hope dies last, right? Um, so there's always hope. Yes. We we continue to hope that the war is over. We pray to God that it's over as soon as possible uh, because no one needs this terrible war. I think a lot of Russian mothers uh, will agree with me. Uh, because no mother wants her child to be sent uh, to battle for their death. Um, I want our children to live in peace. Uh, my son uh, was attending medical university. They, they took away his future because he's not able to finish. He had a lot of hopes and aspirations and plans for his future. He was getting ready to become a plastic surgeon. We continue to hope that we can restore Ukraine. And rebuild our cities that they will become more beautiful and better. And that our children will have uh, the future in Ukraine. Uh, glo glory to Ukraine and glory to our heroes. It's a. И дай Бог силы и мужества нашему президенту выстоять в эти тяжелые дни. And I hope our President Zelensky withstands and uh, perseveres in these extremely difficult times. I want our defenders to stay alive and free Ukraine. Okay, she, I think that's it. Right. Thanks so much. She's going to start crying, she says. <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, I know this is a very difficult situation and mm -hmm. that's going on. So well, just, I appreciate you sharing your story. Thank спасибо, you. Спасибо большое. Это очень трудно. И он благодарен за то, что ты, это очень трудно. Что ты своей историей поделилась. Вы знаете, у нас был очень красивый город. We had a beautiful city, Kharkiv. За 30 лет независимости он настолько расстроился, настолько during the 30 years of Ukrainian independence, it changed a lot, it's gotten more beautiful, it's expanded. There were new parks and homes and spaces for people. Um, and now it's in ruins and there is no more Kharkiv. Поэтому это очень больно, это разбита душа, разбито сердце, my heart is broken. Это, это настолько больно, настолько вот бесчеловечное отношение к украинскому народу. It's very painful to think about the inhumane treatment of the Ukrainian people. Я только не понимаю за что. I don't understand why. We've always been in peace with the Russian people. We have, we have relatives on both sides, in Russia and in Ukraine. Now all of that is destroyed. Their relationship is destroyed. In Russia, a lot of people do not understand. They don't know all of the truth. My friend, my close friend, lives in Moscow. She told her that 
well, you guys shoot at each other, so... Как? Как можно? How is this possible У to believe? информация такая. It's the information they're getting. А, поэтому... И она у меня спрашивает, ты как ко мне сейчас относишься? She asked her, um, well, what do you think about me now? Я говорю, ну мы знаем друг друга уже 45 лет. I told her, we know each other 45 years now. Мы дружили 45 лет. We've been friends all this time. Мое отношение к тебе не изменилось. А то, что тебе говорят о нас, а вот, что в Украине бандеровцы и неонацисты, это я по отношению к тебе. So, the way I think about you has not changed, but you are being told that Ukrainians are Nazis and uh, extremists, and it's basically they're telling telling you that I am a Nazi and I am an extremist. Я говорю, ты в это можешь поверить, что я вот Do по отношению к тебе не нацист? Do you believe that that I am not a Nazi? И все и все остальные так же. Просто людям вбили в голову, что вот э, кто-то должен кого-то защитить. Нас не надо защищать. The people, the Russian people are being told that uh, Russia has to defend Ukraine and liberate Ukraine. There is nothing to defend, there is nothing to liberate. Я говорю, вот если, допустим, соседи твои поссорились между собой, ты же не лезешь туда и не убиваешь одного из них для того, чтобы другому было хорошо. So she gave her an analogy. If, if two of your neighbors got into an argument, um, are you going to get involved? Are you going to punish one of them? No. Они, они, the сами, они сами в семье разберутся. The, the two people will figure it out. And it's the same thing. Now, does she have any pictures uh, from her journey that she can show us? У тебя есть фотографии с того времени, когда ты ехала? Нет, я не фотографировала. No, she didn't have time to take. She was so stressed. Таком состоянии, стрессе, да, что мне не до фотографий было. Yeah, she didn't didn't think to take, but yeah, I have I have screenshots from all the time because we were talking continuously with my mom. My brother lives in Washington, so um, both he and I would talk to each other, you know, keep each other um, updated on what's going on. It was very stressful. Um, yeah. Thank you once again for, for sharing your story. I really appreciate it. Спасибо большое, что ты своей историей поделилась. Спасибо вам. Thank you. Thank you for spreading the word. Yeah. And for letting people know. The world has to know the truth.